What's up, fellas? It's Mark Parson, Cornerback Pro. Today, we got a clip from Jalen Ramsey and Tyreek Hill. They're going to be uh, in Press Man. Maybe about three days ago, I posted a video uh, where I was showing Jalen Ramsey. He actually got the best of Tyreek Hill in that Press Man. And then, uh, you know, I mentioned Ty they, they were battling, so Tyreek got him a, a couple times as well. And that's a, it was a good matchup, man. Tyreek Hill is one of the fastest guys, if not the fastest guy in the league, or at least he plays super fast. So, you know, a lot of guys always ask that question, how do you guard a fast guy? Jalen Ramsey did well, man. Um, the, the, his team didn't do that well, but he looked good. So I'm going to show this other clip, and it's going to be, I'm going to talk about hands and how to shoot hands. I have other videos where I posted it, so make sure you go, uh, while I talk about it, make sure you go through the whole channel and watch the whole channel. Email me at cornerbackpro at gmail.com. Ask for the one mastery program that I say in every video because I want every single cornerback in the whole universe to have that because I know you will, I mean, you're going to naturally just get better, all right? So let's watch it. It's going to show the first clip that I already showed, and then it's going to get to the one I'm talking about, okay? So that's the one where he got him. Notice how he had good feet, stay square, and then he had alternating hands on the strike. This is the one I was going to talk about right here. Good job catching with him with a beat. So we're going to go through it three times. Alternating strikes. Stay square. Talking that mess. I love it. Right here, we get a little off balance in our strike, but I will say this. Anytime we get beat, what do we need to do? Anytime we get beat. And that was a good stack by Tyreek Hill. So receivers, check that out, man. Immediately stacks. But anytime we get beat, we got to sprint. Don't look back for the quarterback. Don't look at anybody else. We just sprint and catch back up with them. I see a lot of high school guys, what guys do, you get beat, and then you're, you know, you're running, and then you look back. And that's the worst thing you're going to do because you're not going to be able to run your, your, at your fastest to be able to catch a guy, especially a speedy guy like him. All right, so I want to show you something. Today we're going to talk about strikes. All right, so how do we strike? Right here, I'm going to tell you up front, guys, I do not like striking with two hands at, at, at the same time. All right, so when you when you when you're a press man, and you throw out both hands at the same time, it's very dangerous for you, because naturally your hips are going to be locked. So if you're going against a receiver who's good with his hands and knocking your hands down, all he has to do is knock one of them down, and your hips are locked, so you have nothing to strike and replace. So that's why I'm a big alternating strike guy. Um, I was training one of my pro guys, pro guys, um, not too long ago. We're talking about it. The danger, the danger of striking with two hands. So I'm gonna show you right here, but striking with two hands. Now look, if I'm in cover two corner and I'm rerouting the guy, at the, at the end of the day, my goal is to slow him up, reroute him. I don't care if he knocks my hand down. So what, right? Because I'm not scared of getting beat. I shouldn't use that word scared, but I'm not concerned with getting beat deep if I'm in cover two. That's what I meant to say. I don't know if I said two, man. But if I'm in cover two, cloud corner, I'm not concerned about getting BD. My goal is to reroute this guy and get into my exit angle and read the quarterback, right? And press man, eh, you know, obviously you don't want to get beat, right? Period. So <clears throat> if I strike with two hands and he knocks my hand down, my hips are locked. And it's going to be very difficult. I don't know if Jalen was – it looked like Jalen was kind of off balance as well. So we got to make sure we don't lunge in our press. You know, you got to make sure our feet are always underneath of us, and we do our alternating strike. So I was telling my pro guy, because some guys are like, well, you know, am I supposed to strike with this hand if he goes this way, if I'm supposed to go strike with – well, that's not going to be like in a game situation or a, a competition type situation. You may He may go this way, and you may strike. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. Strike, and then you can replace. And you're moving your feet. So remember, it's eyes, feet, hands. Eyes, feet, hands. So eyes in his waist, so you can, you know – so you don't get juked. <clears throat> That's why your eyes. Eyes gonna help you stay with the guy. Your feet. You know you gotta have the strategy, the technique. So you gotta you gotta know what you're gonna do before you do it. And then whether it's gonna be aggressive technique or passive technique. And then it's hands. So that's when the strike comes in. So it's eyes, feet, then hands. All right. When we strike, it's gonna be alternating. 
So you you strike, you throw it out there. If he knocks it down, cool. I'm just replacing. And my feet are going to save me. So he still has to go around me because I have good feet. So let's watch it right here. This is the clip I posted the other day. Let's watch. I want you to see the alternating clip. Uh, strike. One, two. You see that? So Tyreek Hill goes for the outside release. He goes for the outside release. We naturally just jab, boom. And it's a very quick. You see how quick it was? But look, one, two. And he does get one shuffle in. So remember I say you need to at least, when it comes to staying square, the goal is to get at least one or two shuffles in before we open up and run. I showed you another clip maybe yesterday where a guy in his press just immediately just crosses over. That's dangerous, all right? He had really good hips. I mean, he's in the NFL, so obviously he's going to be one of the best athletes in the world. When it comes to, you know, you shoot, you're a professional. If you're in the NFL, you're freaking good, all right? You're not necessarily be the best in the NFL, but you're freaking good. So he was able to uh, get his hips back turned and get, you know, make a play on the uh, on the slant. But we don't want to do that. We want to have perfect technique because if you mix great athleticism with uh, perfect technique, you got a chance for to be a Hall of Famer type guy, right? Big money guy. All right. So now, now we're gonna go into the next clip. I want you to see it. Watch where we strike two hands. You see that? So there's no alternating right here, and, it, and I'm. This is very important. You see that? So notice how off balance we end up getting. When we feel that, think about what you're thinking as a cornerback. Like, oh, shoot. <laughs> right? I'm modifying it, but you know how it is. It's the O-ish. Right? So, oh, shoot. Right? So you're trying to open up those hips immediately, and you're kind of off balance. And then you got to catch this fast choker. Because it could be, it could be, uh, Lights out right here. I will say this, Jalen. Hey, oh, I don't know what Jalen Ram ran. It, hey, in the comments, man, let me know what Jalen Ramsey ran in the forty. Cause this dude, he he has some, he has some range, man. He can run, yo. Like I don't know if maybe he might not be a forty guy. I don't know what he ran, but in the game, that dude he gallops like a horse. Let's see. But I want you to see the hands. All right. If um, I'm not sure if he was off the ball or not. Another thing, if he isn't off the ball, yo, we want to get as close as possible to him so he doesn't have this much room to work with. But obviously, if he's off the ball, we got to be, you know, on the line of scrimmage. But always be on the line of scrimmage, you know, because we want to get hands on him. If you notice the other you notice the other play, when he was on the uh, line of scrimmage and we still were kind of like a passive technique, you know, outside kick step, still, man, you can get those hands on that guy. Get hands on fast guys. Get hands on everybody, really. Goes get hands on everybody, stay square as long as possible. But uh, when it comes to striking, just be mindful. So when you practice and practice alternating, the only time you're gonna really like get two hands on a guy is when the guy tries to do the uh, shoot, what is it called? It's a um, is it like a power release? I think it's called a power release. You ever had a big guy usually do this, where they don't really have many moves, and maybe they think, oh, I can catch this dude on his heels. And he just does a power release. He literally just runs at you and just tries to bull rush you. Um, for the most, you still it's still kind of going to be alternating though. It's still going to be alternating, but that's when you kind of get in his chest because he's going to come right at you and you know try to just bull rush you over. As long as you have a plan with your feet, you won't be on your heels. That's another thing. That's the reason why you want you need to have strategies and techniques and have a plan. Because if you don't, let's say you just line up, you're like, oh, I'm going to guard this guy, but you don't have a strategy or technique, you're going to be just kind of on your heels. It kind of It's going to make you anxious because you're like, oh, I don't really know. This guy's dictating the route. I don't know. But when you know what you're going to do, right, if you have a technique, you're going to feel more confident and you're going to be ready to go. And if he just tries to do a power release on you, you're going to strike him with your, you know, whatever hand that comes natural for you, and then you're going to get the other hand right there. So it's going to be like, bop, bop. Right, so I just I just want to show you that, but let's watch it one more time. Boom. So just be mindful, man. It's very simple. Just don't shoot two hands at the same time. Um, another one of the guys who told me that the first person I it was before I got to the NFL and it made a lot of sense. It was it was prime time. It was Deion Sanders who taught us that. He was like, hey, look, and he still teaches his guys today. I saw him at an Under Armour camp online, and he was telling guys, yo, don't shoot two hands at the same time. It's the truth. You know, not impress man. And, and Cloud Corner, yeah, 
cloud corn like cloud cover two. If you shoot, you know, who cares if, if he knocks your hands down? Okay, well, obviously we don't want that to happen, but you still slow them up a little bit, right? But press man, don't do it. Practice and create the habit of alternating strikes. Okay, fellas. All right, man. Make sure you guys, um, parents, if you're watching, definitely one-on-one um, -on -one sessions are available. So we do a lot. So email me. Just if you want a one-on-one, -on -one, whether it be mental training, football IQ, uh, film study, uh, critiquing your films, your uh, your kids' film, whether it just be doing one-on-ones or game film. Um, going over zone coverages because everybody's asking about zone. Uh, so we'll go over that like I did my young fella last week. And I'll give you the programs, you know, on that on that tip. But uh, everybody needs the one-on-one -on -one mastery. I will say that every single cornerback in the world needs the one-on-one -on -one mastery. And I'll throw a deal in there for you and just include everything else. All right? So let's get it, man. Let's work. You know, I bought a book today. And part of your work is your rest, fellas. Just to let y'all know, part of your work is your rest. So it's called Rest. I forgot who it was by, but I really like it so far. Look at y'all reading. Reading is very important. But I like it so far. And uh, just talking about how important rest is. So, like, I tell you guys, you need to work, you know, put a lot of hours into this. But I also tell you guys to make sure you go to sleep. Don't don't stay up all night doing stupid stuff because your body recovers. It does your body and brain does so much when you're asleep. Um, great opportunity for you to, you know, listen to affirmations. If you got headphones, don't make sure it's not too high in your ears. Protect your ears. Um, but taking naps, I talk about it. I talk about recovery all the time, man. Getting the cold bath. Make sure you guys are doing yoga and stretching. Taking naps are huge. So make sure you all you understand that, man. Rest and recovery is part of your work. That's part of being a pro. So I want you guys to look, you need to be a pro now. Be a pro now. Be a pro now. What would a pro do? Ask yourself that question. I don't care if you're 11 years old right now. What would a pro do if you're in college? What would a pro guy do? All right? All right, fellas. Peace.